they've been waiting their turn. Watching their counterparts get first go on the lanes and deliver as stars often do. No doubt they set a mighty high bar. But in case you didn't know, these are some mighty talented bowlers. Power, flair, charisma, even a little bit of fro. The wait is over. Four spots to claim. Who will advance? Get down, Ted! Get down! It's the PBA Playoffs on Fox. What a view from the World War II Memorial across the reflecting pool and then to the Lincoln Memorial. The Washington National Mall is only 20 minutes from Centerville, Virginia. Here at Bolero, the 2020 PBA playoffs continue. The world's best bowlers compete in this season-ending event. And the champion takes home $100,000. We started with the top 24 point earners of 2020. Four have already advanced to the quarterfinals. Belmonte, Lavoie, Simonson, and defending playoffs champ Chris Prather. Tonight, we look to the right side of the bracket to see who will join them as the rest of the top seeds get ready to compete after receiving buys in the first round. Welcome, Boeing fans, to Centerville, Virginia. PBA playoffs roll on. Dave Ryan alongside the Hall of Famer. Randy Peterson joined, as always, by Kimberly Pressler with lane-level interviews as well. Randy, four new bowlers are here into the playoffs in this round. Four studs are here, including Bill O'Neill. Yeah, I mean, they're really bringing the lumber with this group. And we're going to start with Kyle Troop, who's won three times already this season, followed by his doubles partner, Jesper Svensson, the lone southpaw left in the event. He's won twice this season. And then we're going to throw E.J. Tackett in the mix if you like a little more thunder. He's made five telecasts. He's fifth on the money list this season, looking for his first win. And what a way to cap off a great 2020 than by winning this. But everything goes through Bill O'Neill. O'Neill was runner-up in this event last year to Chris Prather, and he would like nothing better than to get a shot at the title once again this year. Here's O'Neill winning his second major earlier in the season. And there it is. He needed a double and nine and got it. Ten years apart from one major to the next, but here's a nice little tidbit for you. Bill O'Neill is on the right side of the bracket, mm -hmm. and that Chris Prather guy is on the on left the side left of the bracket. Side, meaning it's a really good shot that these two could face one another in the finals once again. A rematch in 2020? That'd be awesome. Let's hear what Bill O'Neill's got to say with Kimberly. Thanks, Dave. So, Bill, you've had strong back-to-back -back seasons, but you still have some unfinished business, namely winning this event. So last year you came in second to Chris Prather. So what do you got to do to get it done this year and walk away with that belt? You know, coincidentally, my game plan is exactly the same as it was last year. I'm going to use balls that are a little bit stronger than most of the other guys. I'm going to play them a little bit further to the right, try to throw it hard, which is, which is more of my game, uh, and hopefully keep my glasses from fogging up uh, with this mask on. So that's, that's my main strategy. Well, you can take it off when you're on the approach, I'm, but let's talk about when you are out in that approach. Is there anything unique about this pattern that you like? Uh, there's a little bit more hook to the right than I assumed there was going to be, uh, judging by my earlier practice session. So I'm going to try to use that to my advantage and, uh, you know, stay a little bit further to the right, throw it hard, and get up against that dry spot. All right. We wish you luck. Thank you. All right, Kimberly, thanks so much. Randy Lane conditions tonight. Yeah, the 39-foot Don Carter gets to be a little bit tricky, and I think early on the players that have had the best luck have gone a little bit straighter, especially early, especially on the fresh. So Strader has been greater on the 39-foot Don Carter. Head to head, here we go. AJ Johnson and Bill O'Neill. Round of 16, it's a one-game single elimination format. Now, let's meet AJ Johnson. AJ Johnson, the can't miss kid from Chicago, is getting desperate to prove himself on the big stage, and he's bringing out the big guns at this year's PBA playoffs. This tough guy isn't afraid to talk smack. You don't want this. Let's go. But can he finally put his bowling ball where his mouth is? He's been crushing it in the gym in the offseason, and now his delivery, the combo of ball speed, rev rate, and accuracy, 
is almost as intimidating as his muscles. One of the top players on tour yet to win the PBA title. Johnson is coming to this year's PBA playoffs, Guns Blazing. This is A.J. Johnson. The can't-miss kid from Chicago is ready to bowl. Wheaton, Illinois. Oswego's uh, just outside Chicago. Big Bears fan. High school football quarterback who was offered a Division I scholarship to play college football. But love bowling. Went to McKendry to bowl. Here he is. Playoffs. High shot. And trouble early. Three, four, seven. Well, this wow. is going to be a little tricky because not only is it a difficult split to try to convert, but if you if you totally whiff on it, you can get seven out real easy. Uh, the good news is it's the first frame, so he's not working on anything, but he wants to try to get the ball to the right side of the three pin, or he might just go for count. Four, seven, goes for the count. Rush rating start for Johnson. Now let's meet the real deal. Here he is, Bill O'Neill. The real deal, Bill O'Neill is back after a heartbreaking loss in last year's PBA Playoffs Championship. But this Philly family man with 12 PBA titles isn't ready to settle for second place again. Especially not to Mr. Shark Kent, Chris Prather, who took not one but two titles right out from under him. Can the real deal do his best Lex Luthor and finally take down the Superman of the PBA Tour? This is Bill O'Neill. We'll see if the real deal can deliver here in Centerville, Virginia, after coming so close a year ago. From just outside Philadelphia, Bill O'Neill is back on TV. The two seed gets his playoff run underway. Perfect shot in the one-three pocket. Well, I know Bill O'Neill's not looking ahead, but I promise you, as a former player, there's nothing that he would like better than to get another shot at Chris Prather. Chris stole a couple of titles from him last year, including this one. TV record. It's a lot of appearances, up to 40 now for the 12-time titleist. He is en route to the Hall of Fame. Two majors to his credit. Left lane for Bill. Wow. Perfect. O'Neal using a fairly strong bowling ball, taking his hand out of it just a little bit, meaning he's cutting down on the power and the revolutions and just kind of letting the bowling ball in the lane take it to the pocket. And the first two shots for O'Neal have been perfect. A.J. Johnson, a winner over Kyle Sherman in the first round match to get into the round of 16, 223, 166. And Kyle was just lost. Could not find the look into the pocket that entire match. Now A.J. trying to rebound from a tough start. Tap 10, down it goes. Let's recap his match with Kyle Sherman. Well, you know, Kyle had a rough time, and I, after talking to a few of the players, they thought that Kyle maybe used the wrong ball and maybe should have tried urethane and gone straighter. Uh, so A.J. Johnson wasn't tested at all in that match. All right, left lane. Let's see how he does this time. That's better. <laughs> Look at those numbers there in the circle. Dave Ryan, that's uh, that's pretty strong heat at almost 20 miles an hour and a rev rate of over 500 for a player that uses his thumb. That's the power that they talk about when describing A.J. Johnson. Emotional, fiery. Oh. And fun to watch. No need to like that one, but bring a 10 pin. Come on. Worked out okay in the end. Well, he acted like he didn't like it at all, and, and it, it gets all the way back to the pocket for a ring and 10. And I'm not sure if 
he was surprised that it made it all the way back, but it did. You know, as a player, when you're trying to figure out a TV pair, you always try to want to. You always try to figure out how much mistake area you have, and how much you can miss the target you're looking at left and right. Better. And with conditions like this and these bowlers, Randy, what is the margin of error? It depends on the player and how they match up to the pattern, right? And how they play the pattern and what equipment they throw. There's a lot of ingredients that go into that. As you see, Intimidator Solid. I told you he was using a really strong bowling ball and. And there you go, the hook potential is the strongest ball that he's brought out with his arsenal. <laughs> Late knock on the seven pin and down it goes. And you know what that is, Randy, don't you? It's good clean living. It's the light life clean break of the game. Break it down for us. Phil O'Neill gets into that little swish zone and Gets a nice little love tap on the seven. Watch this. Comes in light, hit him thin, and watch him spin. The late, great Billy Waylu used to use that phrase a lot. Light Life, the official plant-based burger partner for the PBA at Light Life. Our passion is making great tasting plant-based food with simple, clean ingredients. AJ Johnson looking for help. Not the same break on the seven pin Bill O'Neill just got. Yeah, not the same break at all, but it looked like the same hit, didn't it? You liked it. Seven pin, and he's got that. A.J. Johnson, he calls himself the Shark. Shark Kent is Chris Brader, who does have a striking resemblance to Clark Kent. <laughs> All the different portrayals in movies. But he's got that attitude, doesn't he? Going after it, AJ's arsenal. Yeah, it's the desert tank. It's that microcell polymer. Single elimination bowling here. One game, win or go home. A lot of pressure. It's a new format from the round of 16 on at the PBA playoffs. Race to two last year. Lane level look at it. And a double work. See the red line there, just right of the blue line. That's why that ball didn't hook back. You know, talk about the bowling ball he's using. It's very similar to urethane in that it's not very strong. AJ cannot afford to give up the pocket with that bowling ball. And folks, just so you know, no blue oil had some technical difficulties, so we had to bypass the blue oil on, for tonight's telecast. Wearing the colors of his beloved alma mater, McHenry, just outside St. Louis, recently named to the McHenry Sports Hall of Fame. Congrats to AJ. The whole celebration was virtual this year. Great career for O'Neill. Yeah, unfortunate, but a nice honor for AJ. Absolutely. Longtime Team USA member. The real deal steps up. Looking for four strikes, five frames. Uh -oh. And the big four instead is the punishment. Wow. Not a great time for that to happen, obviously. I don't know if it was slow or... The location looked pretty good. It just grabbed onto the lane and went right through the face. You know, he's trying to keep his hand up the back of it to control that down lane reaction. Six stand up. And the big four still haven't made on TV in 15 years. Walter Ray Williams Jr. 05. Did it? It's funny in, the, in our sport how the 710 has always been, you know, kind of the ultimate of splits, if you will, the hardest one to ever make, and yet there's been more 710s made on television than the big four. Max numbers are close here. Game changer, O'Neill left lane, a nice bounce back strike. Bill O'Neill trailing by one halfway through match number one. It's A.J. Johnson, Bill O'Neill, 
Lots more action to come here in Centerville. I always feel like that's kind of the residue of the shot before where he went light on the left lane. And I said, well, you know, you, you can't give the pocket away of that bowling ball. It's not strong enough to get back. And, and sure enough, the next shot out of commercial break, he tugs it. I mean, it, at least that's what I used to do all the time. I call it I call it a little overcompensation. It's in your head, right? It, it absolutely is, you know, and um, it, it's kind of the last thought that goes through your mind right before your thumb comes out. Don't miss right. <laughs> Jonesboro Open, we saw that on FS1 this year. Great to cover the eventual win for Kyle Troop. Man of that place go berserk when Kyle won it. He's just picking it out. One of his three titles this year. Well, I, th I, th I think it was uh, shortly after his mother had passed away. And, it was. And, I mean, what a another just tremendous storybook ending for one of our players. Johnson. Wayne. Yes. Come on, man. It's like that. All even, but O'Neal's working on a strike. And when we went to break, Dave, I heard his tour reps talking with him as we take another look at the last strike by AJ. They were talking to Bill O'Neill about what happened when he left the big four in the fifth frame. And Bill O'Neill said, well, I got it a little too far to the right. And his tour rep, Chuck Gardner, said, yeah, and it looked like he caught a handful. And Bill said, yeah, well, compared to what I'm trying to do, you're right. <laughs> Strike, seventh frame, 10 pin lead, Bill O'Neill. And the max numbers, plus 10 as you see it. For Bill to try to advance, won't be easy. Well, way better than the last shot on that lane. And now he has taken a 10 pin lead. Let's see if he can keep the pressure up as the 2005-2006 Harry Golden PBA Rookie of the Year. He told us, yes, I'm motivated after Coming so close last year, runner-up. Wow. wow. That is Come how you on. do it, Bill O'Neill. Perfect shot, 1-3 pocket. 60 feet to success. Boom! For Bill O'Neill. Head to PBA.com to check out the PBA Pro Bowling video game. The game features the top PBA pros, real equipment, authentic oil patterns, more than 100 tournaments, and online play. Now available for the Nintendo Switch, PS4, Xbox One, and... For your PC. Eight frame to cut it to ten. Looks for the double. Needs it. Doesn't get it. Four pin. About a board, board and a half left. Oh, almost two boards left. Uh, the last time he struck on that lane, the ideal line is the blue line. That's the last strike he threw on that lane. You can see the red line clearly to the inside. And that was two boards left. That would be a total of two inches. And that's all it took for him to come up just a pinch high, leaving the four pit. So here's the comparison with the two players. You can see the laydown is just about identical. Uh, the position Johnson is just a board left of O'Neill, and O'Neill a couple boards to the right, but O'Neill's opening up the lane just a little bit more. The reason why they're able to play pretty much on top of each other is because O'Neill has taken his hand completely out of that strong reactive resin bowling ball, and A.J. Johnson is just absolutely whacking this microcell polymer at the bottom of the swing. Another 10 pin. So about 100 RPMs different difference in the two players. That's a lot. <laughs> Here's the athleticism, athleticism of A.J. Johnson. And then that hand up the back of that bowling ball, even though it's rotating sideways, it's because of where the hand starts. 
never know, man. Come on. And now he's uh, finding himself in a pretty deep hole with two frames to go. And Bill O'Neill in complete control. As AJ said, you never know, but with this guy stepping up for his foundation frame, looks for the four bagger and a chance to go up by 31. You gotta like Bill O'Neill's chances. What a career it's been so far. Wants to continue the greatness here. You bet. Great shot. He's been so good for the last few years after struggling. He went through some went through some changes or some changes he was trying that just didn't work. He went back to what he does best with the help of his father, Bill. And I'll tell you, the last three years have been uh, quite nice for Bill O'Neill. He said his dad, Bill, brutally honest. <laughs> Great with building his confidence. And Bill told us yesterday in our meeting, but man, sometimes you just need that. He sure did. We saw what Bill needs. Why not? Cross it over for a strike. Nice run for A.J. Johnson, but all O'Neal. He was trying to keep that on the lane. This match is over. And Bill O'Neal moves on in this event. Needed seven, got ten, Brooklyn style. Bill O'Neill advances to the quarterfinals with a win over A.J. Johnson, as we talked about. Throw to throw, the two-handed star from North Carolina, Kyle Troop, takes on Nick Payne from the Twin Cities. A huge Viking fan. Got the Vikings colors to honor his beloved NFL team, but Troop will be tough tonight. All troops seven seed against the 23 seed Nick Pate one game elimination match Now let's meet Nick Pate Nick Pate brings a lot to the plate, but at the young age of 25 is he ready to step up to the big league? This Minnesota native was a college star and he's as clean as they come with a straightforward game that's full of promise but he's new to the scene and lacks experience. Does Mr. Varsity have what it takes to make it far in these playoffs? Will he surprise us all and go from big man on campus to big man on tour? This is Nick Pate. From Minneapolis area, Inver Grove Heights, and a huge Viking fan got the Vikings colors here tonight to honor his team. Gets going. Left lane. Perfect shot. A little better than last time. He's trying to go from BMOC to BMOT. Big man on tour. Here's Kyle Troop, the pro with a pro. Let's learn more about Kyle. With a signature look that makes him one of the funkiest figures on the PBA tour, Kyle Troop is undeniably the pro with a fro. Son of bowling legend Guppy Troop, you can tell the ball doesn't roll far from the tree, as Kyle brings kaleidoscope style and winning ways to the lanes, just like his dad. With five national titles and 16 career 300 games, it's hard to believe this two-handed power player was working the counter at his local Wendy's just a couple years ago. One of the PBA Tour's brightest rising stars. Will the pro with a fro be feeling groovy this time around? Pick it out, baby. This is Kyle Troop. A bright rising star to be sure. This guy is fun to watch. From Taylorsville, North Carolina. The two-hander gets going. Nice shot. Yeah, th there's nothing you... You can't like about Kyle Troop. I can tell you that right now. He's uh, every bit of, as good a person as he is a big personality. But not only that, he's an extremely talented player out on this tour. Like I said in the open, three wins here in 2020 for Kyle Troop. I recently got a request from one of our special fans out of Michigan for an autograph from Kyle Troop. He mm -hmm. gave me a hat. An autograph pick, an autograph picture, as in a throw pick. It was awesome. 
Send it to our fan who was so happy. That's the kind of guy Kyle Troop is. Well, that, that's the kind of people our, our professional athletes are on the PBA Tour. And uh, other professional athletes could learn a lot from our guys. Beautiful shot here by Kyle and a nice double to open up against Peyton. That's it, exactly what you want to do with a guy that is inexperienced. This is Nick Pate's 2020 debut in the PBA playoffs. He did not make it last season. And you got to get right on top of him early, keep the pressure going. Oh. Shot, tap of the 10, down right it goes. And Nick Pate said, after his first strike, better start than my match against Darren Tang. That was a struggle. Had to grind one out, Randy, in the opening round, 207-202. Well, he's fortunate to be in this match against Troop because oh. Darren Tang had a chance to beat Nick. And he needed to double in the 10th to shut him out. And Darren didn't get it done. Nick wins by five. So Nick now extra life, or extended life, rather. Extended play, and he's looking to take advantage of it. As you see, his 2020 strike percentage, 57%. And that's brought to us by the great folks at Lane Talk. For more information, go to lanetalk.com. How about a lane-level look at Peyton? Left lane, and the 10-pin stands for him. Randy Moss, Dante Culpepper. Adrian Peterson, his all-time favorite Vikings. A lot of curve in this shot here, and the ball comes in a little soft, leaving that quitter 10. You can see the six pin laying right next to it in the right channel. Sister Lauren, very good bowler as well. She's going to compete on the women's tour next year. It's quite a bowling family. Got the 10 pin. The winner takes on Bill O'Neill. So if if Nick is wearing the Vikings colors, is Kyle wearing the Washington football team colors or what, what's the name of that? Could be. That's it. You had a Washington right. football team. Yep, yep. Yeah, because the, that looks like the Washington football team colors. We're in Washington football team territory here. Well, that, that, and there, I think it's divided, though. There's a lot of Ravens fans here. That's true. Not far from Baltimore. With you on that. Wow. Kyle Troop crunches the one three pocket with power and authority. Take a look at this hand right there. You see how up the back that is, folks? You don't need a lot of side rotation with your wrist to create hook or curb down lane. It's all about where your hand gets to in the downswing and then getting those positions correct and then just a little bit of rotation is all you need. True, left lane this time. Oh, no. Not the same, four, six, seven. Stan, tough split for Kyle. He was watching that shot as soon as he let it go with a little apprehension, and here's why. Right through the nose, leaving the four, six, seven. Not a great time for that to happen for Kyle. He had a nice lead. Had the first three, then the open frame. And look at Pate, up by four pins. Okay, his fourth frame works on a spare. Big shot here. That's high. That's trouble. Four ten split. Yeah, looks like Nick Pate's going to give it right back to Kyle. He's going to try to get his bowling ball right over here and cut this four pit into the 10. Won't be easy. And he whiffs on the four pin. A chance to, to make it. How does Pate respond? Left lane. Four pin stands. Or does it? 
goes down late, and we mean late. We have a term for this, Dave. We call this the slow rack. Oh, got it. As long as the machine does not interfere with that pin or touch it in any way as it's going down, it's legal. Wow, that was amazing. So it was a very good response for Nick Payton. Right lane, fifth frame. Nice hits, but will he get that count break? No. Ten pin up for Kyle. Not a bad shot, but just a little late coming around the corner. You see him give it the kick. He wanted to kick on the 10. Guys, 10 pin got his mark next Sunday, November 8th. We crown a champion on FS1 PBA playoffs wrap up. Quarterfinal action at 1.30 Eastern, followed by the semis and the championship at 3.30 Eastern. It's back to back on FS1, also streaming on the Fox Sports app. We can't wait to wrap up the 2020 PBA Tour season. Phase two on the right lane, hustle PBR on the left lane. God, Marty, nice rack. Well, nice rack is he's referring to the pin configuration when the pin setter sets all 10 pins down. Troop frustrated, does have his mark. But this one is close. And that's, Randy, what bowling fans love here on FS1. PBA playoffs, Tate Troop. The matchup to see who takes on the real deal. Bill O'Neill in the next round. PBA playoffs roll on. From Centerville, Virginia, and Bolero, we're just outside Washington, D.C. Troop, Pate, continue this one-game single elimination match. And it's close. Nine-pin lead for Troop. Dave Ryan, Randy Peterson, Kimberly Pressler with you. Watching the season-ending PBA playoffs. Uh-oh. Wow. Oh, my! Wow, that came back from North Carolina. Carolina, come on. Look at how far right that is, folks, right there. We haven't seen a ball get back from there this entire event. And he didn't look worried at all. Not by one. Third this year, semifinals loss to Sean Maldonado. In Indy, left lane now. Perfect yeah. shot. Great shots. Yeah, it really was, Nick. Right out of commercial and working on a strike. He's turned it into three in a row. And now an 11-pin lead for Nick Pate. Really, two really real quality shots he just pitched right there. Kyle Troop has his hands full here. Three-time winner on tour this year. Six in his career. Been fabulous in 2020. And now Kyle is being tested. Frame, yes. Well, let's take a look at the player comparisons here with these two, and they're basically mirroring one another. Take a look at the laydown area. They're basically a half an inch apart. Now, the blue ball is Kyle Troop, and the red ball is Nick Pate. And you're going to see that they're almost right on top of each other at the arrows and the break point. The reason why the blue ball is out in front is because Kyle Troop's throwing it faster because of his higher rev rate. All the breakdown rating is awesome stuff. Oh, it's great stuff from Specto. And uh, our big thanks to Kegel, Brent Sims, and Bob Ford for all the their hard work and great stuff that they give us each and every week out here on the PBA Tour. A couple of doubles titles, Troops resume, and he's got all 10 
down in the pit. Kyle, true big strike on the left lane to keep things very interesting here. As nasty as a vulture's breath that pit action is and went just when he needed it most. Back with another strike in the ninth if Pate doesn't strike here. Son of Big Showman himself and Guppy Troop. Eight-time winner on tour. Guppy's watching his son carefully here. Pate, right lane, looking to respond. Oh. Nine pin. Ah, that's how bone works. During your breakdown, by the way, Troop did take one of his two re -racks. Unlucky here for Nick Pate. Throws a nice shot. And watch the bowling, go, bowling ball go right past the nine pin. Miller, Svensson, next. Nine pin, has the spare. This is the number you, you want to kind of focus on now, folks. Re rack for Pate. The most fearless voice in sports is on FS1. The one and only Colin Coward is bold, unique, and outspoken, and you can see him on the herd weekdays on FS1 and the Fox Sports app. Big oh, shot. Even here, buddy. Yeah, you're right, buddy. It, big shot here for Nick Pate, though. He's got to set up the 10th frame. Foundation frame. Pate, yes. That's a big break. Seven last to go, but oh, down it goes. Game. It's a strike. He got that inside. You can see the number right there. And it's a good, almost two and a half boards left of his last strike shot on that lane. Remember, blue line is the good, the good line, the last strike, and the red line is the shot he just threw. And he got away with one there, but I think it may have owed him one after that solid nine, the shot before. Now Kyle Troop, he can shut out Nick Pate. Wow. Those pins had absolutely no chance. Strike, troop, ninth frame. A double and one pin, and he will win this match. He's got the turkey here. Well, he makes that two-handed style look easy, and it's anything but. And he labels that shot. That's what he needs. Takes a re-rack. Kyle Troop, just to confirm, is wearing the Washington football team's colors here. Usually likes to pay homage to the local franchises with his creative gear. He's always looking so good. It's awesome. Oh, boy. Doesn't get it when he needed it. Leaves the two-pin. See that number there? Just too far to the right. He didn't like it. You can tell. Trying to will that one into the one three pocket for a strike. Okay, that's one of the Well, Kyle Troop strikes on this ball. And Nick Pate goes strike nine spare. We'll have a tie. This shot's very important because if Troop strikes, it forces Nick Pate to throw not one, but two strikes in the 10th frame to win. All important count coming into play right here. Huge shot, left lane Troop, yes! delivers and creates the pressure now for the young star Nick Payton. See how much in part of the inside that shot was then the first shot the 10th and well I'll tell you what Kyle Trouble would surely like to have one back. Now Nick Payton needs the first two strikes 
to win this match. Looking for the first one. Ringing 10 pin. It's over. Combo works, man. Wow. Right, Solid. Kyle, troop relaxes on the pitch. Yeah, man. <laughs> Breathe out. a sigh of relief there. Now That's you can pick it out. it out. Now. You might want to wipe. <laughs> You might want to wipe the sweat off your forehead first, Kyle, because he was sweating that one out. But a solid nine pin in the eighth and a ring ten in the tenth on that right lane was what sealed the fate of Nick Nick Pate. Good ball, man. Good ball. Keep it going. You're only 25 years old, young up and coming star, third year pro. Love you, Gup. Love you, Tyler. Big shout out to my boy Guppy Troop. Back in North Carolina, Guppy. Hope you're doing well, my friend. Kyle told his dad, playing a lot of golf, watch a lot of bowling, and still competing out there, locally in North Carolina. Staying active. Well, Nick, Nick Pate's got a lot to be proud of. He bowled very nicely in the PBA League Series, and he did himself proud in this match against Kyle Troop. But now Kyle Troop, he's going to move over there and stand up against that wall, and he gets Bill O'Neill in the quarterfinals. Kimberly joined by the pro with the pro, Kyle Troop. Thanks, Dave. So, Kyle, today I saw you very serious from the start of this, and uh, when you're sitting over there and Nick did not get that strike, I saw you take a full sigh of relief. What was going through your mind? No, uh, I've been battling a little bit with myself this week, you know, the few weeks that we've been here. Um, you know, I, I've been struggling with some physical game stuff, so I really try to just lock in mentally, uh, try and stay as focused as possible, make the best shot I could. Uh, that shot in the 10th frame was not very good, so I knew I needed to get a little help to win the match, but, you know, sometimes the hits go your way, and that one did for me this time. So you won this, but now you're moving on to the quarterfinals, and you're going to be taking on Bill O'Neill. Are you going to change anything up? I've got to be better. I mean, that's the only, you know, the only reason, you know, the only thing is I've got to be better. I've got to make some better shots. Got a little slow with the split there, and I didn't execute in the 10th as well as I'd like to. But Bill's been a great experience in the playoffs, so I know i got a big match coming. Well, a win is a win, and you move forward. Congratulations. Thank you. Always great to hear from Kyle Troop. Big win. Next match, it's Brad Miller head-to-head -head with the Iceman from Sweden. One of the most athletic, talented players on tour, Jesper Svensson. Power. Purpose. When he's rolling, I'm not sure there's anyone more dangerous. The Iceman steps up, seeking his third title of 2020. It's the PBA Playoffs on Fox. Brad Miller, Jesper Svensson, set to go head-to-head -head PBA Playoffs. Here in Centerville, Virginia, it's a one-game single elimination match. Win, advance, lose, go home. Let's meet Brad Miller. It's Miller time for this half of the popular YouTube channel, Brad and Kyle. When he's not vlogging, Brad Miller is grinding on a PBA tour, yet to break into the elusive winner's circle. Hailing from Kansas City, does he have the fight in him to win here at the PBA playoffs? Yes! Yes! This is Brad Miller. Is this Miller time? Let's find out. He's got his hands full with the two-handed lefty from Sweden. Just outside Kansas City. Good start for Brad Miller. He threw some great quality shots in his match against Tom Doherty and, and just kind of kind of lost it there for a little bit. And uh, I'll tell you what, it said a lot about him mentally. He was able to find it, put it back together, and then made some great shots to close out Tom. Here he is, the Iceman, Jesper Svensson. The Iceman cometh. With a piercing stare and the tour's most powerful strike ball, Swedish-born Jesper Svensson is the Iceman. A former bricklayer in his hometown of Vimmerby, 
Svensson emerged like a white walker from beyond the wall to become an international bowling sensation. The youngest ever winner of the PBA Tournament of Champions and the first bowler to have five PBA Tour titles by age 21, this former Rookie of the Year is as tough as he looks. Can this Iceman take it all and become the Ice King at these PBA playoffs? This is Jesper Svensson. Let's find out if he can become the Ice King of these playoffs. What a talent this guy is. Svensson, playoff run starts with a strike on the right lane. This guy looks like he, he can throw bricks at the uh, one-two pocket and strike. Of course, being a former bricklayer. I know you love his game, Randy. What do you like the most about it? It's just so unique. We're going to get a shot from behind, and I'll show you exactly what, what I mean by how unique his approach is a little bit later in this match. Really good run in Indy. Doubles with Troop. Singles title as well. And he's looking good early here against Brad Miller. As we talked about, 215-195 win over Tom Dory, the two-time titleist in the first round. Brad's message to us after a really good appearance at the World Series of Bowling in this center earlier this year. I feel like I'm home here. Feel very comfortable. Right lane? Uh-oh. Maybe not. 4-7-10. Pretty good hook spot down lane that Brad got a hold of there and goes through the nose and pays for it. The 11 seed lost the cover and the 10 pin stands. It's an open frame. And with the open down 22 pins early here, but just getting going in this one game match. It almost looked like the 5-7-10 was going to be standing there for a second. Let's see if we can get a replay of that and show you what I'm looking at. Watch this. 5-7-10 was. We call that the sour apple. You don't see that very often uh, on the pro level. It uh, used to be where the only time you would leave that is if you were throwing a really light ball or a very weak ball. That's not why Brad almost left that. It's because of his angles. And you saw the reaction. <laughs> he was not yeah, happy no. at all about that one. I mean, that, that could have easily struck, but he almost left the 5-7-10. I think I saw Barnes leave the 5-7-10 on a replay of a shot from the Weber Cup one year. Isn't that crazy? I remembered that. Sorry, Chris. Career numbers on TV. Outstanding for Jesper. Pins had no chance. Watch the feet separate of Jesper Svetson. Right there. Is that crazy or what? Normally the pivot step goes in front of the slide, but that's the uniqueness that I touched upon when you asked me what I love so much about Jesper Svetson's game. Now, let's go to Kimberly. Well, guys, the bowlers were watching Jesper in practice earlier, and he threw 20 strikes in a row like it was nothing. Add the fact that Jesper is the only left-hander remaining in the field, and it's no wonder the ramblings yeah, among the players is that he may be the one to beat. Sean Rash even told us that this oil pattern allows Jesper to do what he likes to do, and when he can do that, he's unstoppable. 
Yeah, Kim, I mean, you're, you're spot on with that. I, I, you know, we, the, the players all, always talk about how lethal this guy can be when he's when he's got his look. And his look is throwing urethane and going fairly straight up the lane. And when he can do that with confidence, he's hard to beat out here. Watch out. Dave, Randy, Kimberly with you here. Bolero, Centerville, Virginia. Our PBA playoffs roll on. To the right side of the bracket. Round of 16. Single game elimination match. The winner moves on. Loser done. Lost the Belmo title match. Chameleon championship in this center. And that's the familiarity factor that Brad emphasized with us in our pre-match meeting. Kind of like your home center. Just feel really comfortable. And sometimes you get some breaks. Sometimes you get some good bounces. And all. Tanner down. Hey, did I mention that they re-oiled? So we re-oiled after our first two matches as a fresh oil pattern. Brad Miller sending it right. Having it come back there. It looked very similar to that last shot on the left lane. This one strikes. Chance to cut it with a strike here in the fifth to 21 pins. As he tries for his third strike of the match and a double. Lane oh. level look at it. Wow. Perfect shot. One three pocket. And those pins, zero opportunity to stand after a perfect shot from Brad Miller. Yeah, it's a nice shot. Nice rebounding off of that open frame in the second. Now, uh, Brad Miller's got himself a nice double and something to build on. Ten titles, one major already for this young star from Sweden. Only 25 years old. Yes, Burr. Are you kidding me? How does the seven still stand? I'm surprised he didn't scare it over. Pits flying everywhere in front. He leaves that ripper seven. Watch the pin action of the powerful Jesper Spenson. Got his seven pin. So close to just crushing that one three pocket and getting them all down a moment ago. But Miller's going to step up in the sixth, working on a strike. Max numbers are pretty close. Fast pitch. It's kind of matches the way he throws it. No high lobs over the plate for this guy. Oh, 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 oh. Highest rev rate we've seen throughout the playoffs by that man, Jesper Spence, and the shot before it was in the 580s. It's Jesper Spence by 20 halfway through this match brad miller working on a double lots more of this match still to come don't go anywhere folks i love the fact what's announced on the lanes when the match is over i mean but thanks to all the folks all their hard work justin and kendall jeffrey and all the folks involved in putting this beautiful set together absolutely match resumes miller steps up and strikes Crunches the one three pocket. Nothing left. Steps up. Hey, doggone right, he steps up. I mean, that was a beautiful shot working on a double and cuts the deficit to 10. He stepped up big time. Now he can make this match all even with a strike here in the seventh. Wow, look at that ball reaction. <sighs> okay. Look from our crew. Huge shot here. Phase two. His ball of choice.
to tie Come it. Come on, baby. Yes! What a shot. We have the Iceman on one side of the lane and Mr. Fahrenheit on the other. Brad Miller heating up. Let's see how these two are playing. So look at the launch position. Even though the numbers are different, they're actually laying the balls down at the same spot on the lane. And then one goes to the left, one goes to the right. Yes, we're going much straighter using your thing. Brad Miller hook in the lane. We have an all-even match, folks. 7th first Fenson in a dogfight with Miller. Right lane. Oh, wow. Perfection from Jesper. It's a bad dude. You go back and look at this game for Jesper Spence. Remember, he left the solid eight pin in the fourth. And then that messenger, massive messenger seven. Otherwise, he'd be perfect for seven. Big shot here in the eighth frame can increase his lead back to 20. Eighth frame, looks for the turkey. Seven pin, not enough to knock it down. Just a little long down the lane and leaves that weak seven pin, a little shaker seven, if you will, and well, now he's in jeopardy of getting shut out. It's a pretty common spare to make. Seven pin, no problem there. Millions of kids nationwide are without their normal access to sports and play. Due to COVID-19, that's why Fox Sports and Good Sports are restoring play for kids and the programs that serve them through donations of brand new sports equipment. Help keep kids in the game by texting PLAY to the number on your screen. That's P-L-A-Y to donate today. Great program. Yes, it is. Appreciate your help with the kids. It's a fantastic program. You need more of it. Looking for a five-bagger here. He didn't like it. I'm not sure what, what happened, but something distracted him. But yet, you look at his numbers, they look perfect. And the ball enters the pocket almost perfect. And he leaves this vicious ring in 10. I'm not sure what distracted Brad. You see his eyes moving down as he targets short, but something caught him. He still executed brilliantly. It was a great shot. You're right. We looked right over to his right to try to find out. What it was. <sighs> Brad Miller's been working real hard with his coach, Mike Jasnow, back in Utah. They spent a lot of time together. And I think the biggest thing that Mike Jasnow did for Brad was really work on his mental game, really help him mentally. And, and that showed in the Chameleon Championship when he beat Anthony Simonson and EJ Tackett before finally losing to Jason Belmonte in the title match, but it's kind of carried over. Sure has. They call it jazz camp. A lot of hiking, a lot of thinking in the mountains of Utah. It wasn't just the physical game. Brad said it took a lot out of that. Really helped him. It's showing here. Come on, baby. Left lane. Oh, yes. Big shot, big strike. Brad Miller comes through. I mean, he's really managed nicely after the open frame in the second. Dave, I, I mean, really nice. And uh, he's now set himself up for the 10th frame finale. He can strike out to shoot 237. Come on, baby. Yes! break for Jesper Svensson a disastrous leave that one shot's gonna cost Jesper Svensson this match 
and any chance of winning the PBA playoffs. One shot that did hit the pocket, and he pays for it. 379. 379, tough to pick up. Oh, across the deck in the seven. He just barely missed it. And a really good try to try to pick up that difficult spare conversion. Can't manage it. And sees his lead disappear just like that. Hard to tell what happened on that shot. He was locked in, and the, for him to miss that badly, inexplicable. He still has a slim chance if he strikes out, or at least gets the next one in good count. He does force Brad Miller to throw the first strike in the tenth. See the max scores right there, folks. He's going to take a re-rack, but he's got a strike on this ball. And be his only chance. 23 seed last year in this event for Jesper. Beat Marshall Kent in the first round. And then lost to eventual runner-up in the seventh seed, Bill O'Neill. And I say it's his only chance because I don't see Brad Miller opening in the 10th frame. I, I mean, if Jesper does... If, if he doesn't strike on this ball, it gets a spare at 2.13, it'll still force Brad Miller to mark. Now that forces Brad Miller to get a strike. First ball in the 10th. It'll be the biggest shot of Brad Miller's career thus far. I mean, I know that he bowled for the title about a month ago against Bill Monte, but he wasn't really in that match. And I mean, it was a little close, but down the stretch, it was all Bill Monte. Miller beat Simonson and Tackett en route to the final, losing to Bel Monte. Second and final re-rack used by Jesper Svensson. Miller has to. The Iceman trying to ice Miller a little bit. Well, he's taking as much time as he wants, and you're right. But to give you an idea of how devastating that shot was in the ninth, if Jesper would have struck there, this match is over. Finishes with a strike. And now the pressure is on Brad Miller. Well, Dave, there's only one thing left to say. It's Miller time. This is it. 30 years old, looking for his first PBA Tour title. Strike in nine for Brad. That is what is necessary here tonight in Centerville. Needs the strike. Come on. Gets the strike. Huge shot for Brad Miller. Yeah, he aced it. What a great shot. Nine and zero, or eight one on this next shot. And Brad Miller moves on. Yes. Almost left a solid nine. That was the only thing that was going to stand up there. Nine pins, and it's over. <sighs> Needs nine. Oh. Yes. Gets ten. Gets a win. Brad Come Miller on. moves on. In the 2020 PBA playoffs. Well, like I said, what a comeback after that second frame open for Brad Miller. He hung in there against an absolute beast and got the opening of his career when Jesper Svensson went 3-7-9 there in the ninth frame.
Next up against the winner of Tack and Small in our final match in this show from here in Centerville. Kimberly joined by Brad Miller. Brad, here we are again, and you are advancing once again. <laughs> but you needed a strike in the 10. Was that the biggest throw of your career so far? Yeah, probably at this point, but I've had so many good experiences coming into this. I've, I've been in this position probably three or four matches now so far this week, and I just, I just kept telling myself, like, just keep it rolling. You know, you know exactly what you need to do. Just go out there and do it. And, you know, I actually think I missed a little bit, <laughs> and uh, I caught a little bit of a break, but... Going into the second one, I just thought, do it again, and it happened again. I don't know. I'm on our little run right now, Kimberly. <laughs> well, congratulations. It's working for you, and you are now headed to the quarterfinals. Thank you so much. Kimberly, thanks. Congrats to Brad Miller, 11th seed from Lee's Summit, Missouri. Tom Smallwood, our next match, head-to-head -head with a tremendously talented E.J. Tackett. Next Sunday, you're in FS1, November 8th. We crown a champion as the PBA playoffs wrap up. Quarterfinal action at 1.30 Eastern, followed by the semifinals and the final at 3.30 Eastern, also streaming on the Fox Sports app. Tackett Smallwood, round of 16, win or go home. Let's meet Tom Smallwood. There are underdog stories, and then there's the story of Tom Smallwood. An auto worker laid off in the Great Recession of 2008 turns to the sport he's loved since childhood and goes from Joe to pro overnight. Good in the clutch, Smalls has been coming from behind ever since he defeated Wes Malone with an epic win at the 2009 World Series of Bowling PBA World Championship. But can Smalls tempt fate again and walk away with another epic win? This is Tom Smallwood. Let's see if the old king does get some redemption here. Looking to repeat that Cinderella story at the PBA playoffs. Won't be easy against Tackett. Smallwood. Starts his show, left lane, Tempere. And uh, right away, he's going to go with that same urethane ball that he used against Chris Barnes. EJ Tackett's going to stand left and throw right. And we talked about Smallwood before not being afraid. He's not. He's going up against, pound for pound, the strongest strike ball on tour. Has his mark, first effort of the match. Now, let's meet E.J. Tackett. Straight-laced E.J. Tackett may not strike fear from his size alone, but strike he does. Small but mighty, Tackett's power is unbelievable with a fast delivery and remarkable release that has some calling him the best one-handed player on tour. Fighting for his 14th title, the former Rookie of the Year and Player of the Year is already Hall of Fame eligible at only 28 years old. Don't let his frame fool him. Tackett is as talented as they come, and he's poised to make headlines at this year's PBA playoffs. This is E.J. Tackett. What a talent. He strikes fear in me. <laughs> this guy is unbelievable on the lanes. EJ, wow, great start. Right lane. Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, EJ Tackett could scare the pants back on you. <laughs> he's got so much talent, and, and uh, you know, he's been on kind of a, an unlucky streak, if you will. Uh, five shows this season. He's got a couple of seconds, uh, a couple of thirds, um, and he's just... You know, one one little break away from. Perfect start for EJ. EJ has been on the scene so long. I mean, he's eighth year, but he's only 28 years old. Tom at 42. He told us, look, I'm trying to stick up with a step with these young guns like EJ Tackett. Got two majors to his credit. World championship. 2010 2018 players championship Tom right lane 10 pin 
Not a good sign back to back flat tabs with that ball. Six pin right there laying next to the 10. Never a good sign for a right hander. As the 10 pin has his mark, beat Chris Barnes, the Hall of Famer. In a grind him out match, Randy didn't he? 215, 180. Well, Chris uh, had a couple of comments after this match. He said it's one of the worst games he's ever bowled on TV. And um, it was still relatively close for the most part, but um, Smallwood just did enough to get by that match. There it is, Tank Rampage. There you go, much better. Unique release and rotation of Tom Smallwood, and that's what makes him so good out here. Is he's just so much different than all the other players. 14th seed, his last TV finals appearance before Indy had been the Barbizal PBA Players Championship. A lot of TV lately for Tom. Attack it. A little tap on the four. Goes down late. And a big strike for EJ. Well, you look at that. EJ Tacky with a nice little break here. Watch this. Who was it that just got done saying not too long ago that he hasn't had much luck on his way lately? Who was that? Was that you? That'd be you. Oh, you that said that. That was me. Mm -hmm. That's true. He has been unlucky and frustrated on TV, but you know what? He'll take it. <laughs> Gladly take it. There's a pretty high strike percentage here. It's one of the highest I've seen in 2020, 61%. Going for the front four here. Tack it left lane, bringing 10 pin. <laughs> it's, it's almost like comical. He's, he gets that great break, trip of the four pin, and it just comes right back with a, hey, take this, ringing 10 right in your face. Great shot. So the bad breaks are right back already for the guy. Well, Tough. I mean, it's, Tough. Dang it. Oh. Spare the game is brought to you by Guaranteed Rate. Mortgage rates are historically low. Save money at rate.com. Today, there's the 10 pin for EJ, which in the center has not been a gimme, Randy. Well, he struggles with the 10 pin. No, I agree with you, but he's a real good spare shooter. And, uh, Absolutely. And I like the guaranteed. Uh, spare right there because uh, I had faith in EJ making that <laughs> To cut it to 10 fourth frame small Uh-oh Almost left the bucket Yeah, but that eight pin almost fell forward and if it, if it would have fell forward It's it was gonna take at least one more out and would have made this spare attempt a lot easier Watch the back pin the eight pin Look at that Just one more fraction, that thing's going to come over. Yeah, I think another eighth of an inch, That's and it falls right. into the, either the four pin or the two pin. That's well, Nick Pate opening match way back in February in Indy, the event won by Jesper Svensson. Two, four, eight. Can't cover. It's a chop. Oh, eight pin so up. Open frame, God. Tom Smallwood. Jesus Christ, come on. Tack it on the bench, sees his lead, balloon to 32 pins. Well, Tom moved farther right and then tried to use some of the friction to get that urethane ball to curve into that spare, which is what you're supposed to do. And then he really hammered on it with his wrist and the ball just grabbed too much friction and overhooked. Hurt most of 2019 with a pinch nerve in his neck. Basically five months he was in severe pain and just couldn't get in the lanes and be competitive at this, the highest level in the world. You're two time sportsmanship award winner. They're really good guys on tour, but he feels good now. Left lane, help, and strikes. Very iffy ball reaction, as far as I'm concerned, with the back-to-back -back flat tens, and he does throw the nice strike in the third. Then 
just a little light, leaves almost the bucket like you mentioned, and then barely crumples. The pin's there for his second strike of the game. Venom shock for EJ Tackett. He's open. Wow. And he blisters the one three pocket. Those pins have zero opportunity to stand. Now that's covering some territory. Extremely high rev rate approaching numbers. Uh, Jesper Svensson like only EJ uses his thumb. Looks for the double to go up by 42. Ringing 10 pins. Good shot. Oh my gosh. And we're back to the ringing 10 pins now. For EJ. <laughs> back to back on that. And it, it's just so violent. I mean, watch how violent this six pin snaps around the 10. I mean, that, that pin's going to need a neck brace. Look at EJ's reaction. He's like, yeah, really? Seriously? I mean, it's not that hard to not understand when a player's playing that much angle. But it's still EJ Tackett making some seriously amusing and great shots. Lots more to come halfway through our last match. Suburban DC, Centerville, Virginia. Our one game single elimination match between Tackett and Smallwood rolls on here. PBA playoffs. Second half, last match of the show in Smallwood out of the commercial break with a ball change and a strike. Well, this match is far from over, and we'll see what Smallwood can put together now with this different ball and a different line of attack to the pocket. Tom told us yesterday, feels the best he has in a long time on the lanes, physically and emotionally. Seventh frame, we cut it to 12. Get it! Yes! Yeah. Come on! And just like that, two ringing tens yet? for Tackett. Small one throws a triple, and now all of a sudden it's a 12-pin match. Take a look at the comparisons when Smallwood was using the urethane ball. Tackett, a good 15 boards left at the laydown and almost 10 boards at the arrows. And you can see how much territory EJ Tackett was covering and how straight Smallwood was going. Not the case now. Smallwood ball change a little closer to EJ. Tackett, wow. Respawns 60 feet to success for EJ. Think about these numbers. 19 20 at the arrows out to four i mean that's really carving it now the question is can he carry a 10 pin on the left lane and oh by the way folks he has to finish this match on the left lane former player of the year what a talent Here's that left lane we talked about there. It's a strike for EJ. Takes a long look at the left lane. <laughs> you stay down. You stay down 10 pin. 22 pin lead. Yeah, it was dirty. A beautiful shot again for, by EJ. Look at the torque in that elbow and wrist and then the open hand. So good. Strike streak now. Five straight between the two. Small has got to respond. Right lane. Cut it to 12. You bet. Bad choice. Come on. Hard over yet. You no, know, it certainly isn't. And, and you have to ask yourself, you have to ask yourselves, what if he would have started with that ball? I bet he's asking him self the same question. Oh, I bet he is too. You saw it right away. One more. One more. Huge shot. Left lane. Ten pin. Down it goes. Wow. 
Tipping, tipping 10. Cuts it to two pins. What a strike of the night. Well, I'll tell you, some days you're the dog and some days you're the hydrant. And that time there, that dog got a huge break with tripping that 10 pin. Two pin match. Great finish here. Attack it. Trying to respond. 10 pin. Gosh, dang it. Can you believe that EJ Tackett can now lose this game? The hit that Smallwood just carried versus the three 10 pins by EJ Tackett, two vicious ringers on the left lane, and then that flat 10 there. All right, EJ Tackett can still strike out for 238 and force Smallwood to double into 10. Our matches tonight seem like. Almost all of them are coming down to the 10th frame. Gotta love it. Which is uh, all you can ask for. That's what the PBA playoffs are all about. We started with 24 of the world's best bowlers. We're about to set the Elite Eight. <laughs> Left lane, E.J. Oh, my God. Ringing 10 really? pin. Really? Uh, Again. Four of them. It's tough, EJ. It's tough. I, I really don't have anything to say except that um, he has not had a lot of really good things go his way this, this year, and yet he's there each and every week. And Well, you're so right. I mean, we called the PBA Tour Finals win he had in Vegas. That was in 2019. His last title has been so close along the way. Players' championship top seed for a major. <sighs> Come on, EJ. Let him make it strike one. EJ Tackett strikes right here on the fill shot. He forces Smallwood to throw the first strike in the 10th frame. Runner up with the Cheetah in this building. Re-rack taken. Lost to Sean Rash. Third in the Chameleon. Lost in the semifinals to Brad Miller. Actually won by Jason Belmonte. It's been a close, but no win type year for EJ. Well, there it is. <laughs> yeah, but hey, will it will it pan out for him? Yeah, that's a great break, but it matters not if Smallwood throws the first strike in the tenth frame. Smallwood needs a strike in six on the on the that next shot. And it's over for EJ Tackett. Here it is. Eat the strike. Yes. Get the strike. Tom Smallwood delivers in the clutch. What a shot. For the 42-year-old from Michigan. I mean, this looked like it was going to be a rout when we started. And halfway through, that, that first commercial break looked like it was already over. And then Smallwood makes the ball change, and he hasn't missed since. Wow. Need six. Gets eight. Gets the win. What a comeback. What a run. You're right, Randy. Second half of the match, he was fabulous. And Tom Small with the 14th seed will end the dreams in the 2020 PBA playoffs of third seed EJ Tackett. First, Chris Barnes, the Hall of Famer. And now the 13-time titleist, EJ Tackett, knocked out by Tom Smallwood. This is the one he needed, and this one was just perfect. What a great job by Tom Smallwood. What a comeback. Tom Smallwood advances to the round of eight to take on Brad Miller.
O'Neill, Troop, Smallwood, Miller, quarterfinals right side of the bracket. Next Sunday, November 8th, we crown a champion here on FS1 as the PBA playoffs will wrap up quarterfinal action at 1.30 Eastern, followed by the semifinals and championship at 3.30 Eastern time. Look at the matchups we've got, including the world's number one and soon to be named player of the year, Jason Belmonte, Simonson Prey, the defending champ, O'Neill Troop, Smallwood Miller as well. Now for Randy Peterson and Kimberly Pressler and the entire crew, it's Dave Ryan saying so long from Bolero Centerville in Northern Virginia. You've been watching the PBA on FS1. What a night. PBA playoffs. Miller.